Welcome to another real-time trade. In this video, I'll discuss several ways to manage the trade to empower you to design a trade management model that suits your unique mental wiring. This is the stuff of the real game. Now let's join the trade in progress. Hey guys, Zar here. Good morning to you. Hope all is well. It's 9.32. You can see we have a second one minute candle here forming on the NASDAQ, S&P and Dow, the three sisters with VWAP, volume weighted average price, two and a half standard deviation bands on that. For those who are new, just watching the open here, I'll be uh, cutting out dead air, sideways grinding action, non-teaching moments, things like that. Keep this video nice and tight. Looking for an opportunity here potentially at some point today. We may get a trade, we may not. I typically trade between well, zero and three times a day, uh, depending on what the market offers. Looking for optimal setups only, maintaining a, trying to maintain a high win rate. A little bit of a win streak right now. I know that won't last. They always come to an end. Um, but with VIX moving a little bit higher than 20, uh, it's certainly helping things along a little bit. Uh, actually, lately, the elevated VIX this week, for instance, and last week has been have been good weeks, but really have had to be super patient in waiting for optimal setups only. Not interested in just tossing coins all over the place. Uh, I did trade more like that in my early years, but now in my fourth decade of trading, uh, much more disciplined. But I do struggle with impulses every single day. I am a, a person of action. I like to be engaged in the act of trading, and so that can be a temptation, but uh, I've become much better at at uh, managing that uh, those impulses, and that impulse in particular. All right, we have a divergence here, guys. Can you see that here? NASDAQ dropping, uh, Dow rallying after some consolidation, and the S&P, as often is the case, has come somewhere in the middle, a little bit indecided here, or undecided, I should say, with some indecision. Um, but the NASDAQ definitely showing some weakness here, certainly out of the gates. We'll keep our eye on it. I'll put you on pause, guys, bring you back as things develop here, and we'll see if we can get a trade here today. Who knows? Pause now. All right, guys, watching the S&P here. So far, the weakest of the three. Looking to short the weakest, potentially. It's not a live order yet. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you uh, when, I should say. This is just for now, I'm just thinking. Watching the three sisters on a different monitor, as always, right here. Indecisive at the moment. But definitely some waning momentum here. It's 9.46. Typically don't trade in the first 10 minutes. We're now, well, 17 minutes in. All right, guys, we're back. Price is failing to get higher here on all three sisters, now beginning to break down. Let's go back to this. I've been sitting here watching it just kind of do its thing here. Again, failure. Now below both EMAs on the NASDAQ. Watching the three sisters on a different chart. Sell stop order live, guys. Sell stop order live over here. Bearish daily. Marginally, and I say marginally because it is a structurally bearish cascade lower low than yesterday and of course lower high so far um, blue body bearish in its and I'm in guys bearish in its own right triggered in right there give me one moment all right here's my actual entry it's not looking so great right now out of the gates is it that's okay Coin has been tossed. Now it's the waiting game.
And now we have a new 30-minute uh, candle breaking the low, and that, of course, is exactly what I would want and expect in a situation like this for this trade idea to work out. Driving down a little bit now, we'll see if this thing is going to continue or not. Now, you might be also wondering, I'm always trying to think of what might be happening in your mind. What might you be thinking who might not have 35 plus years of trading experience? And you might be asking, well, why would you take this short going right into the support zone? Well, a couple of things. Let's go take a look way over here. You'll notice that support zone really doesn't go anywhere here. That's clean traffic when you go far to the left. The support zone is only from the pre-New York area, right? So prices drove down and then meandered back up, or kind of rallied back up, but not particularly aggressively. If you remember the, well, let me just show it to you here on the uh, one minute chart. You can see it's kind of, you know, ground back up before the New York Open, right? So um, this is, you know, it, it's meaningful, but not particularly powerful. Given that we now have a whole new group of traders, this is the New York, uh, this is the North American session. So some of these, uh, the Asia's done, right? They're they're sleeping at this point. And so we don't have to worry about them anymore, That cr who created that range that you see here. The Europeans are still very much in this game until about 11, 11.30. It is now 10.01. So we're still an hour to 90 minutes away from them, leaving the game completely, for the most part. There's always global players, of course, in the futures market and what have you. We're always talking about the, the bulk of the, the, the puzzle and the equation here. And so this could be easily be broken because we can get a range explosion in New York. Typically, we have narrow range in Asia, expanding range in Europe and exploding range in North America. We see that day in and day out. Let me try to show that to you here. This is yesterday. Narrow range Asia, expanding range Europe, exploding range in North America. Narrow range in Asia, expanding range in Europe, exploding range in New York. Narrow range, expanding range, explosive range. So you see and on the beginning of these first few candles, see what they can do. See what damage they can do. All of a sudden, this little resistance zone doesn't mean a whole lot. Like, uh, a uh, hot knife through butter. And so all of these things need to be taken into consideration. Time of day, opening candles, um, momentum, all of these important things. Uh, what's happening with the three sisters? Are they all telling us the same thing at the same time? The answer is or was yes on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the entrance of this, uh, or the entry, pardon me, of this trade. Keep your eyes open now and bring you back. And target one has been hit. So the one hour all or nothing trader has exited the trade with full profitability. And the two hour move to break even at one hour has just moved their stop to break even. So they're, uh, they will get uh, at least a two hour or a zero with a break even. We'll see how the rest plays out. And target two has been hit at one and a half R. So the one and a half R all or nothing trader has exited the trade with full profitability as did the one R all or nothing trader. We'll watch to see how far we can take this. What you'll notice, guys, is exactly what I was talking about here with the range expansion is breaking through that zone that was formed in pre-New York. So again, the New York or the uh, North American participants not actively even started yet, right? The tapping of the uh, resistance was important because it actually tapped there and then rejected. As a matter of fact, all three, the S&P, which is this one, of course, the Dow, see that tapping? The resistance of rejecting quite violently, as a matter of fact, and the NASDAQ tapping, penetrating, and rejecting again quite violently. So all three sisters on the 30-minute chart tapped and rejected from a 30-minute resistance zone. Why I wasn't so concerned about this support zone is because it hadn't been tapped yet. The whole idea of the trade is to drive down into it and potentially through it, ideally through it, of course. And this is the S&P here. There's the trade. So um, hopefully that makes sense, guys. 
This is now um, has you know could turn into a zone break trade. Clearly, it has broken into a fresh traffic range. I won't know if it's actually a zone break setup until this candle closes and the potential break below and a few other criteria that you will know of already. Uh, but hopefully, you get the idea. Back on pause for now. And we're done, guys. Target three has been hit. Took a while. Two are. So all four models, as you can see here, have benefited fully. I won't go through them. You know them. The models are right there. Uh, just a quick reminder about what this trade is all about. This is a zone reversal trade. Bearish daily. Exploding time of day, right? All three sisters, NASDAQ, ES, and Dow, tapped and rejected aggressively from a 30-minute zone. And uh, then break of structure here on the three sisters and a negative moving average configuration. Prices below both EMAs, EMAs uh, flipping to a negative moving average, meaning that the nine is below the 21. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Looks like this thing might even go lower here, but I'm happy to take my 2R, 24 uh, E-mini points on the S&P 500 and uh, be done for this trade. Later. Hopefully we'll see you again a little bit later. Happy Friday to you. Have an amazing afternoon. Thanks for being here. Feel free to come by and join our Telegram group as well. Links are in the uh, description. Happy to see you there. And we will talk to you soon. Take care.